Back in the old days, in order to send your computer screen to your tube TV, you had to convert the scan. And I found a scan converter at the thrift store for a bargain. I'll test it and check out the features coming up on Thrifty AV. This is an Aver Media Aver Key I Micro scan converter that I found at a local Goodwill store. Uh, this was a device that came out around 2004, sold for about 85 bucks back then. Uh, I got it a lot cheaper than that recently. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to my laptop computer here and see if I can transmit to this old tube TV. So let's get started. Here's the power connector at 7.5 volts. You can loop VGA through this. There's the VGA in, there's the VGA out. This is SCART RGB. That's not commonly used in the United States and requires a special cable. I don't have the cable I need for that. There's S video output and there's composite video output and that's the main one I'm gonna be using today. I have the resolution on my laptop set to 1024 by 768 because that's the maximum resolution that the iMicro can handle. I will be adjusting this resolution to see what happens a little later in this video. My laptop has a VGA output. I'm going to go ahead and run that into the VGA input on my iMicro and you just heard my laptop say that it detected something and this isn't even plugged in yet. Let's go ahead and plug in the Avermedia and we have a red LED indicating that this is on. I'm now plugging in my composite video cable. Right now I have the composite video cable running into this DVR slash DVD recorder. But just to show you that this is actually doing something, I'm going to plug it directly into the TV set. And you can now see that the display on my laptop matches the display on my TV set. I do want to go ahead and use the DVD recorder, however, because I want to record some of this uh, the scan. So the first thing I need to do is I'm playing this loop on a DVD here. I'm going to stop that loop from playing. Now you can see what's being output from the laptop through the DVR and into the TV set. I'm going to call up my website real quick. All right, I have thriftyav.com up on both my laptop and the TV set. On my laptop, the font is readable at this resolution. You can definitely read it. On the TV set, however, it's pretty fuzzy. If I zoom in on the font, it is never quite in focus. It's really hard to read. The resolution of my website really takes a hit when it's converted down to 480i. There's a zoom button on here and the big question is, does it zoom before or after it converts from 1280 by 1024 to 480i? So I'm going to hit the zoom button and that green light that says zoom came on. And now I am zoomed in on a section of my website. And things are a lot more legible now. So I can verify from this that the zoom is taking place pre-conversion before it's converted to 480i. That's a really good thing. One thing about the zoomed image, it seems to stretch vertically more than it does horizontally. So that's making my logo look uh, skinny. Uh, makes me look kind of skinny, huh? There's one other feature. It's called overscan. Uh, I just tried the zoom. I turned the zoom off, and now I'm going to try the overscan feature. The overscan button has three scanning modes. This would be overscan. That's a regular scan, and that would be underscan. Underscan shows 
everything on the image within the frame. And you can also do the zoom while you're doing the underscan or the overscan for that matter. And it still works. There's one more button I want to check out and that's the sharpness button. And like the scan button, it seems to have three settings. Okay, uh, I'm gonna hit the sharpness button. There are three modes and you can kind of see you can kind of see what happens with the font up here as I go through the three modes. Uh, it's hard to really tell any difference on the actual screen image as I go through the different sharpness modes. It's just such a, a dull resolution anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and play this video and put it in full screen mode. Okay, I'm doing a video capture over here and I'll go back and forth between this video capture and what I'm recording at uh, 480i over here. Now I have the sound turned down, but that's kind of intentional because uh, the Avermedia iMicro does not have audio pass through. So I would have to play the audio out of the headphone jack here into the audio input on my recording device anyway. So I just, I'm not messing with it. I'm just doing video. By now you're getting a pretty good idea of the before and after with scan conversion on this device. Okay, at this point I'm going to pause my playback of my video. I'm going to stop my screen recording. I currently have the resolution at 1024 by 768, but this computer can handle higher resolutions and lower resolutions. Let's go down to 800 by 600. So 800 by 600 is working just fine on my scan converter. Okay, so let's go up. Let's go above the recommended resolution. Let's do 1360 by 768. And even though this resolution is not technically supported by the Avermedia iMicro, it seems to still be working. I'm going to take the resolution up to 1366 by 768. And again, even though it doesn't officially support this resolution, it still seems to be working. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. Now I have another computer that can go even higher on the resolution, but it does not have a VGA output. So I can't really test it with the Avermedia. Testing the VGA through it is outputting to another monitor over here, so it's working just fine. In this day and age with HDMI 4K video, the usefulness of this iMicro device is limited, but it's still a fun addition for a retro video editing setup. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And speaking of Patreon, a small $1 per month pledge will give you access to some exclusive patron content that's not listed on my YouTube channel. Behind the scenes stuff. Stuff that you don't see on my other videos. Thank you for watching and remember, stay thrifty everyone.